Hello, and welcome to The Third Sector. I'm your host, Tamara Brinkman. In our society, there are three sectors, <clears throat> the public, the private, and the nonprofit, and it's that third sector that we're here to talk about today. Joining me on today's show will be Major Bill Welch from um, Salvation Army, and then later in the show, we will have Katie Kitchen, who's the new executive director for um, Richmond Community Schools Alumni Association. But um, starting us off today, we have Major Bill, Major Bill, welcome to the Third Sector. Thank you, glad to be here. Well, we are glad to have you. Um, I'm super excited to hear about the Salvation Army today. Uh, why don't you start with just uh, a little bit of the history, because Salvation Army, I know, has been around um, for a very long time, mm -hmm. and then um, bring that in locally to how long have we had our chapter here in Richmond. Well, the Salvation Army actually started in 1865. It was started in London, England by William Booth, and it came to America shortly <coughs> thereafter. Um, it was started by seven ladies who came here and grew thereafter. We've been here in Richmond, Indiana for it's been 135 years now that we've been here in Richmond. Wow, that is quite a long time. Yes. That is a long time. So um, talk about what the mission of the Salvation Army is. The mission is to reach um, those that need help to better them to help them and also to preach the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ to them. Mm -hmm. Not not necessarily the people who come in, but to help them um, realize that there is that option. Right. There's a there's an option in that in that in that area to to help if that's something they want yes. to go down that that road. Okay. So if if you you're in need of help or services, but maybe didn't want that component, mm -hmm. it, are you still, are you still welcome? Would you oh, still definitely. feel okay about yes. coming? So. Yes, we do not, um, for the most part, even mention that factor. We have mm -hmm. a question that we ask, do you realize that the Salvation Army is a church? They can answer yes or no. And, um, if they want more information, we're willing to give it. If they don't, we still give them the same services. Mm -hmm. We don't benefit them for saying yes. We don't disqualify for saying no, we, they get the same things no matter which. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the services that the Salvation Army locally provides for um, our community members. We are just in the process of reopening. We've been closed for a while since last November. Mm -hmm. Right now we are doing a food pantry and we are also doing a Bible study. We are doing, we've got um, assistance for center point gas bills that we're able to help with. That's okay. the main things that we're doing right now. So we're, okay. we're hoping to grow that as time goes on, but we are in the process of reopening things and figuring out what's going to be the best fit for the community. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that you are reopening, right? You mentioned that they had um, closed down mm -hmm. and um, certainly there's been a little bit of transition. You're yes. new into the position of uh, leading our local Salvation Army chapter. Um, share with the viewers um, really the state of Salvation Army in our community. Sure. Um, right now we are doing fairly well here in town. Mm -hmm. We still have definitely room to grow and I know that we're reaching out to other community organizations to see where we can best fit in. We don't want to necessarily try to duplicate everything that's being done elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We want to see if there's holes that we might be able to fit in and fill in. Um, we are currently staying stable, which is a good thing. We have not done that for years here, unfortunately. It's a fact that it's been quite a few years since they've been in a stable condition here. And so mm -hmm. um, we're working on doing that and we will be doing a full Christmas assistance this year. So we're looking forward to doing that. So. Okay, well, that'll be exciting. So we'll go along that just for a moment because um, uh, <laughs> Christmas will be here before yes. we know it. Yes. Um, and and when you talk about, so tell us a little bit more about the Christmas assistance, but mm -hmm. let's also make sure people know about um, the red buckets. Uh-huh. Well, the Christmas assistance we'll be doing, we'll be doing uh, toy collections. Um, people will come in sometime in October. We don't have the exact dates set mm -hmm. up, but if they call in October, we'll be able to give them the dates. They'll come in, sign up for it, and then we put their names out in trees in the community at different locations. and. Okay. People can collect the names and buy toys for them. We also will do a, either a 
food box or else a gift card for a store for food. Mm -hmm. And the red buckets is where we do bring in a lot of the money that we do for Christmas as well as throughout the year. A good 75% of the money does come from Christmas time through that, through mail appeals that we do at Christmas time. So a okay. good portion of our money does come in at that time. So that's a very important fundraiser for us. Okay. So, you know, as you are out and about in the community at the holiday time and you see those folks with their with their bells and that they're ringing and they've got that bucket, know that that money stays local yes. here. And um, if you put, you know, your spare change or whatever you can afford um, into that, it, it will directly support um, those in our community. So keep an eye out for those, those red buckets and those bell ringers. Lots of them get really into it with the Santa hats yes. and things like that and, and really try to, you know, make, uh, make it a lot of fun. And, and remember, a lot of times they're out there standing in some not so great temperatures at that time yes. of the year. So yes. <laughs> um, they brave the elements, and 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 that that says a lot, right? So, mm -hmm. um, well, given that you are in that rebuilding phase, do you have um, kind of any <clears throat> goals for the next year or so that where you're hoping that um, you know with that time you'll have done, you know. We are Any hoping um, by January that we're able to start up more programs. Okay. Um, right now, we're not sure exactly what that will be. We're mm -hmm. kind of looking around, seeing what what needs need filled. Right. And we're hoping come January we'll be able to start new programming. We are hoping to um, get Bible study and church services going sometime in the next year. And we're just hoping to be able to fit in where it's needed the most in right. the community. Right, right. Well, it's nice that you're taking a look at things and trying to be strategic about it because, you know, there are a lot of needs in this community, um, but there can be a lot of duplication. Yes. And sometimes that's helpful because, oh, yeah. you know, there's more research sources to reach out. So with the food pantries yes, and the, it. you know, things of those so sort, because food is a huge basic need for people in our community. Um, but there's, there's a lot of other things. So we appreciate that you're taking that, you know, um, long lens approach to, to figure out where you all can serve best. Where do you guys hold your church? Uh, 707 South A Street. Okay, 700 South A Street. All right, well, good to know. So um, we've been putting some information up on the screen, uh, the website, um, also the phone number. Uh, so if you're um, wanting to connect for services, you can reach out to, to um, Major Bill through that phone number. Tell us how your organization is governed. Um, do you have a staff or a, 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 any, you know, is it all volunteer support? Um. <laughs> right now, it's just me. We do have volunteers that help out. Okay. Um, they come in on Food Pantry Day and other days. And, um, but right now, as far as staff, it's just me. We're hoping to hire somebody in January for a part-time position to help mm -hmm. out on pantry days and with other programs and things. Mm -hmm. We are governed by an advisory board locally. Okay. Um, we're just in the process of getting that re-going. I've talked to the members, and we'll be having a meeting in August. Okay. So seeing where, where they see us going also in the future. So. Okay. Okay. So how big is your advisory board? Right now, we have eight members on Okay. It. And are they um, all around the community? Do they come from like business and, mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, they're all local people. There's some that are businesses, some from banks, okay. lawyers. And so. Oh, good, all right, well, wonderful. Um, so you mentioned a little bit about how, this, how the, the, the red buckets at the holiday time is a big part of how you raise your funds. Mm -hmm. How else do you guys get the funding to do the work that, um, that you do in, in the community? Um, it's all basically donations from locally here in town. Okay. Um, people can bring in donations. We have some people that'll mail them in on a regular basis. We do do mail appeals that we send out basically on a monthly basis and get quite a bit of money in from that also. But, okay. Um, basically it's what people bring in donation wise, monetary or canned goods for the food pantry, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Um, do you guys, um, do you apply for grants? Or, or is we, that... we have in the past. Okay. Um, not since I've been here, we have okay. not. But that is something we'll be looking at in the next year. Okay. 
All right. Well, good to know. So tell us a little bit about how people can get involved with Salvation Army. We're always looking for volunteers on um, food pantry day. We can use volunteers. That's um, Thursday mornings from 9 to 12. We can definitely use volunteers then. Um, if you have any special skills, we can use volunteers for doing different things. Christmas especially, we need volunteers. The red buckets, we try to man as much as possible by volunteers. We have mm -hmm. different organizations that volunteer for a whole day. Um, some volunteers that'll take two, three hours at a time. So we mm -hmm. can definitely use volunteers at Christmas time, but um, that's some of the big things right now that we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what brings you the most joy about what you do? When we're able to help people just so, um, see the smile on their face when they're um, getting some kind of assistance and it's helping them. And um, I really like it when we're able to help better them so they're in a better situation where we can help them better their, their life where they're at right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot of, um, you've got a lot going on with a lot um, to look forward to, it would look like. Um, and if you are interested in volunteering um, or getting involved with the Salvation Army, we have their information. We've put the phone number up on the screen. Um, as well as the website. We've got um, sarichmond.org, as you're seeing now. And uh, just reach out to them. You know, uh, it, it, it's a wonderful thing if you've got a little bit to give back. Um, your time, your talent, or your treasure are always appreciated by these nonprofits. They work hard for those in our community that are less fortunate. So think about them um, as you uh, see them around town and certainly at the holiday time when you see those red buckets. So um, that's going to bring us to the end of our time today. Um, I do want to thank uh, you, Major Bill, for joining the Third Sector. Uh, we appreciate everything you all do for the community and wish you guys lots of luck as you continue to expand your services coming going forward. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, when we come back, Katie Kitchen from the RCS Alumni Association will join us. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Third Sector. Joining me now is Katie Kitchen. She is the Executive Director of RHS Alumni Association. I got that a little bit wrong. I think I was saying RCS earlier in the show. So. Let's make sure, I, for the record, I get that correct. Katie Kitchen, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, so you are the new executive director, newly, uh, for RHS Alumni Association. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, tell our viewers about the RHS Alumni Association. What is it? How long has it existed? Sure. <coughs> Well, um, no worries about the RCS because RHS is part of RCS, right. <laughs> Richmond Community School, so it's totally okay. But yes, we are the Richmond High School Alumni Association. Some folks know us as the RHSAA. Okay. Um, we have, um, we're actually the third oldest alumni association in the nation, dating way back to 1871 when the first graduate high school graduating class had hosted a dinner for the second graduating class. So that's a little bit of fun history there. Wow, I had so, no idea know, of pretty, that longevity or the national standing and ranking. Right. Pretty. Small little Richmond, Indiana, and <laughs> right. here we are. Claim to fame, right? Claim to fame. That's, that's exciting <laughs> sure. news. Okay. Um, but fast forward to uh, more modern times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back in 1990, there was um, concern, the RHS superintendent was concerned about the high school um, dropout numbers and okay. that folks were <laughs> dropping out of high school at an alarming rate and therefore not going on to college. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, um, a group of alumni and local business leaders established what we call the Richmond College Incentive Plan. Mm -hmm. And that is a scholarship program that gives money to Richmond High School graduates wanting to pursue a higher education here in Richmond um, at one of our local um, higher education colleges here. So Indiana University East, Ivy Tech, Purdue Polytechnic, um, even the Reed Radiology program, and then also, of course, Earlham. Okay. So uh, we still continue that, those scholarship programs today. 
1997, we partnered with the Wayne County Foundation, and mm -hmm. they get, provide us an annual update about funds available to provide such scholarships. Okay. Um, and anyone can apply who's an RHS graduate. So okay. our priority goes to those we've helped in the past so that they are able to finish their undergraduate degree. Okay. Um, and the next would be the graduate current graduating class of that year. Mm -hmm. And the next would be any alumni wanting to pursue an undergraduate degree. And then if there's any money left, um, someone who needs who wants to per pursue even further education is okay. um, eligible. Of course, the stipulation is that you're an RHS graduate and that you're wanting to um, attend college right here in Richmond. Wow. Um, do you have any idea like how many students have been helped over the oh, over years? the course of, of our yeah, existence? Yeah, exactly. Well, or even <laughs> just since you guys were more actively doing the scholarship, you know, in the 19 from 90, <laughs> going back is pretty far. Going back, that's going back quite a while. And I must apologize that I do not have that number off the that's, top of oh, my that's head. that's okay. I've just been in this role a couple yes, months. Yes. Um, so I don't, but I know that it's, it's certainly been, um, it, Many, 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 many um, kid. kids yeah. have been helped, um, and we are considered a last dollar scholarship, so okay. um, kids who may get other financial assistance, other scholarships, other grants are still encouraged to apply because the, that assistance might not cover their entire tuition, mm -hmm. um, and maybe they just need a little bit of assistance, but we really, our goal is to really help these folks get a higher education right. um, at debt-free right. and keep that talent here in Richmond. Yes, that's that. That is the big key, right? Absolutely. We want to make sure that they stay here yes. and um, and keep 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 living and thriving in in this community and make it the community a thriving community. Absolutely. So. Um, tell us about the um, the goals of your organization for say the next year or so. Or sure. Um, well, of course, we always are going to continue our scholarship program. Mm -hmm. um, we also really, we exist 100% on um, membership and donations. Okay. So we really want, would love to increase our membership. And really, this is part, we, I'm really happy to be here to spread the word that we're here. Right. <laughs> and we're um, part of the community. Uh, we really would like to grow that membership. So any um, Richmond High School graduate, we encourage you to uh, become an RHS Alumni Association member and help support our work. Um, your membership helps cover operational fees and then of course you can um, also give to our scholarship funds. Um, and so growing our membership is really a goal. Right. Uh, we also would like to get really involved with the community. We're hoping coming up we're to have some fun events, mm -hmm. um, just some fun alumni get togethers and really grow that Richmond pride. That would be exciting. Um, how do you guys get the funding for the grants? I mean, you did member mention the membership. Sure. Um, do the members need to donate? Do businesses donate? Do you do grants? Is it all? <laughs> well, we do. We have um, endowments that have been okay. around for quite some time, mm -hmm. and those are managed, like I mentioned, at the Wayne County Foundation. Okay. Um, so. We have quite a bit in our endowment funds okay. that then are um, distributed to us. Mm -hmm. um, really, twice a year we do scholarships in both the fall and the spring. Okay. So uh, maybe someone doesn't go to school in the fall, but they want to pick up and go in the spring. That's mm -hmm. okay. We're still encour encourage you to apply. Right. Um, so we, that's one aspect and and one way we have our money. Um, always, anyone is able to um, contact us if they want to do any sort of an endowment or trust, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and and then of course, yes, just individual donations from members. We like, to, we really want to um, engage our alumni to continue this tradition. Mm -hmm. So, so for the kids that are graduating, um, more current or somewhat recent alumni, are there any requirements for them as far as um, you have to have had a certain GPA or? Um, certain eligibility qualifications? Sure, we do require um, a certain GPA and we ask that you, of course, if, if someone has been graduated from high school a long time and they haven't right. been to school, we'll work with them on, on that. But any current um, high school senior or anyone who is already in college, we do request that they submit their grades to us. There is a GPA requirement. And then we also require um, to see your financial aid status. So like a bursar statement, we would mm -hmm. require from your university Mm -hmm. um, just so we can we can get to that last dollar amount, right. and then also a college ID just to verify um, 
that you're enrolled in school, what your schedule is going to be like, right. what your fees are. Right. So there are some requirements, and of course that, that you're a Richmond grad. Right, right. Yeah. Um, well, so tell us a little bit more about the Alumni Association. How are you guys governed? Do you have staff? Sure. I mean, aside from you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a board of directors okay. um, comprised of all RHS graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very passionate board who really has a lot of pride for Richmond High School and the Richmond community. So mm -hmm. we're very thankful for our board that um, continue to volunteer their time and talent to uh, help us thrive. And then staff. You're looking at me. <laughs> um, so um, I'm the director, and I'm um, currently the only person on mm -hmm. staff. So that's that's makes it fun. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it fun. I can I can understand that uh, that position. You end up being the the person who does everything, and everything is is literally everything. Yes, it's, it's a lot, but that's where the, the, the board really comes in and steps up and, right. and helps out with projects and with um, even day-to-day -day things. They're, they're right. really helpful and always answer that call. Well, that's good. That's yeah. excellent. You, you need to have good, good folks like that. Absolutely. Um, so tell us about um, how could people get involved? So do you do you have to be an RHS? I mean, obviously, to be a member, you would, but could you do any volunteering or Absolutely. help you guys out in any way? That's a great question. Um, because to be a member, yes, um, being an RHS grad would, would be preferred, right. of course, but it's funny you ask about that because actually, way back in the early 90s, one of our um, one of the biggest supporters was Art Vivian. I'm sure you've heard that name, being here on the IU East campus. And he actually was not a Richmond High School graduate. Graduate, um, okay. But he did uh, live and work in, in Richmond and called Richmond his home. And that's where he um, lived and worked and made money and helped really establish this fund under the name Give Some Back. Okay. Um, so if you believe in our mission, if you believe in giving some back um, to this community and keeping local talent here, mm -hmm. um, absolutely, we would, we would love anyone to, to donate to the cause. Well, um, hear that community. <laughs> well, I ask because, you know, I mean, I live in Richmond, but sure. I, I, I didn't go to school here. Right. Um, so I obviously would be eligible for funds, but there may be folks like Art Vivian, obviously, who are passionate about the community, and maybe they went to a rival high school, right. and they still want to help, you know, Absolutely. Um, folks do that. Um, are you the only... Um, the only um, alumni association that does this grant support in Wayne County out of the other schools, do you know? I believe there is one other county school in the okay. area that does. I don't know if they can if they are considered an alumni association, but I believe that they do have a similar program for okay. their graduates. Okay. Um, so I, there is, I think, one other one that okay. I know of. Okay. Um, off the top of my head. But. That, that's, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just, you know, these things come to me sometimes. Sure. And it's like, oh, I wonder if. And so right. sometimes if I wonder, I'll ask because maybe you know, and if you don't, absolutely, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm sure Katie will know soon and call her up and ask <laughs> Call her. me up to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we are putting her information up on the screen for you. So you should be able to see the Facebook page, a phone number to reach out if you had questions or wanted to know more about how to get involved or you're a former RHS um, graduate and you want to, you know, know more about the Alumni Association. She is your person. Um, Tell us, I mean, I know you haven't been in the job too long, sure. um, but our last couple of questions. First one is, what would happen if the organization ceased to exist in this community? Sure. Well, I think, as I've mentioned a lot about the scholarships, um, those dollars would not be there for these kids to, and I say kids, but it, it could be anyone. It could be adults going going to school, mm -hmm. and, and maybe they have they graduated quite a while ago, but they want to pursue a degree. Um, so I think those dollars would not be there for these folks to, to go to college and stay here in Richmond. Mm -hmm. um, we really feel um, part of our mission is to really work toward um, bringing up the work the the education level and work and experience level to our local workforce mm -hmm. so i think if we can have a well-educated workforce um, richmond thrives i think with a strong alumni richmond thrives so i just think um, it, it would be it would be a miss if we weren't here um, mm -hmm. we really i also think richmond pride we're really trying to work uh, part of our focus right now is really trying to work toward building that RHS and, and RCS, as you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, pride and really bringing um, 
a sense of community back to the school system. So um, we're, we're really hoping to focus on that, and I think that's important. Okay. Uh, we're down to about a minute-ish. Sure. Okay. Um, what brings you the most joy about what you do? Well, I can't wait um, to hand out our scholarships and uh, call these kids. It will be my first time as director calling these kids and let them know that you're going to be going to college debt free. I think um, if I would have been, if I would have gotten that call as a as a graduate yeah. uh, as a graduating senior, it just would have been wonderful. Yeah. So, and I think. Hopeful, hopefully, I guess I should say that also part of what we do, our um, scholarship recipients do have um, a community service, mm -hmm. um, the element to the, that they do when they receive scholarship funds. So oh, they great. give back to the community just as the community gives back to them. So it's kind of full circle. That's um, great. So it, I think it'll bring me joy really to, to oh, yeah. make someone's day with that phone call. Yeah, and you will. You will okay. for sure. Um, that takes our time today um, for the show and also with um, Katie. I want to thank um, my guests for joining us today and telling us all about the great work that their organizations are doing to help support our community. Um, thank you to uh, Major Bill from Salvation Army. And of course, again, another thank you to Katie Kitchen from RHS Alumni Association. Um, Stay well, and we'll see you next time on The Third Sector. Mm -hmm.